Dr. Joe McInnes with us along with Steve Santini as we continue our conversation about the Titanic. It certainly has almost become a, a nationwide uh, obsession. But there is something, Joe talked very eloquently about this, about how it makes us peer inside our own heads to what is human nature, how would we behave. Mm -hmm. Do you have those same thoughts? Absolutely. Um, I have to thank James Cameron because I have been accumulating and researching items to do with the ship for 20 years now. Mm -hmm. And when you have these things around you, and I don't mean hokey items like, you know, uh, you know, hand painted Fake light replicas, real, right? real yeah, yeah, real things to do with the line and the people that crewed the ship. It was always emotional and they always speak very quietly to you. Um, but when you see the film, the reason I think it was such a success and it's done so much to people is in the cynical nineties, Titanic makes people feel things. It reaches inside and gives a little twist. And it did it for me because now I can't it, it look at these things and feel the same way ever again. There's always something every five or ten years that'll make me realize that there was a tremendous sacrifice that night. It was a night of love, bravery, damnation, cowardice. It was many things. It was a night of emotions. Mm -hmm. yeah, the whole human family was on board that ship. Yes. And the, they experienced the full range of human emotions. And I think that's what compels us. All the best was evident and all the worst behavior was evident. So it, it has a draw. And, uh, you were just saying, as you look, we're looking at that life yeah. jacket, that it almost reaches out and touches you. Well, it does. I mean, there's a power in these things. I'm not quite sure what that is, mm -hmm. but it, it affected Steve, and, uh, and uh, it's affected a lot of people. The, there's kind of two classes of things, Steve, because you talk about these real items. Right. They are artifacts, in a sense, right. as opposed to the CD-ROMs, the Broadway musicals, right. the board games, the you know, posters, the, the posters, yeah. anything you could imagine. Does that offend you? Well, <laughs> well I, all right. Um, for instance, I'll give you an example. There's an online auction service right now. Yeah. Uh, and they started off, I guess, about six months ago with having a listing for maybe 100 Titanic-related items. Items basically... This is off the movie set. Yeah, basically okay. to do with the film. Now that has clogged their server at over 500 items being listed daily and bid upon. And where it really kind of gets me is, I think Titanic, that, that shows what the movie's done. More people are affected by the film than, say, reality, perhaps, yeah. because mm -hmm. things from the film are actually fetching more than authentic White Star China plates Jim Cameron <laughs> had made are going for like $500 a salad plate. And you could previously find an authentic White Star piece for $350. Now, it's amazing. <laughs> People are buying everything from the little bits of coal that the salvers have been yeah. selling off with a little plaque to sign Leonardo DiCaprio 8 by 10s and they're, you know, just it's gaga for it. The six and degrees of separation, bit of trivia, the board game. Okay, I thought, that, you know this board, this the play that was there. I think maybe right. uh, Hugh will talk about that. But that everybody is somehow connected Absolutely. to the Titanic when you start to pursue this. They want to be. When I do lectures <laughs> on the Titanic, when I do lectures on it, it shows human nature. Everybody comes up, and at least I can count one evening, I will get five people on any given evening coming up and telling me a story about their grandparents missing the boat right. because they lost their ticket or being refused at immigration. If you took all those people that want to have a part of this historical There'd have been event, 10 million people. Titanics. <laughs> you know, it's incredible. You must hear similar stories. Yes, I, I think there's this kind of quest uh, in some people. I'm thinking now of the people who set out to discover it and set out to exploit it. If you connect yourself with this story, you connect yourself to immortality in a way because the story because will go on and on, on and so it, you you are mentioned in the same breath as the story and that's a kind of immortality it's a the psychology of the titanic titanic fever is a fascinating unplumbed ocean i must say yes. but it uh, but it that's tells what you're going to do with it this book. <laughs> yeah, it tells us a lot about ourselves that's yeah. why i want to do the book the uh, pictures, we're going to put up this picture here so you can see it more clearly. Um, this is uh, a shot that Steve has brought along, not of the Titanic, but of a sister ship. Wow. Now tell us, because this is a bit of wreckage, what Actually, we're looking at. It's, it's from a ship called the White Star, it's from the White Star Line, yeah. um, not identical to Titanic. Okay, not a sister but, ship. Right, but it's called the Doric, the RMS Doric. And this is a photograph that has not been seen or published. It's something I found in my digging. And it shows the Doric after a collision with a French vessel. 
in the 1930s. Now why this is really important is it shows two very interesting things about the ship that really the same thing would have occurred to Titanic. There was a rumor a few years ago and actually testing that supported Titanic at brittle steel plates. Yes. And when she hit the berg they literally shattered like glass. Yes. Well I've always said the rivets popped on impact with the berg. And in this image we can clearly see a hull plate where the arrow is pointing to now right. with a double row of rivets that are gone. All empty. All empty. That plate is bent. That's an inch thick just like Titanic's. And that is bent at about 30 degrees, the angle. Now, it's hard to see. We're looking down from the wing bridge. Yeah. And the next shot, what you're seeing now the arrow's pointing to, is a piece of framing, which is the main hull framing that these plates were fastened to. And protruding from that are rivet stems missing the rivet heads. And when the brittle, theory, brittle hull plate theory yeah. came out, I ran around to everybody saying, look, this more than likely isn't so. There's been other ships that had collisions. Look at this picture. Look, nobody would listen to me. I'm not a scientist. Mm -hmm. Nobody cared. And yet now they're doing work on the rivets down in the States. It's to see that it just couldn't withstand the... Absolutely. The it's, well, it's very simple. If you grab your shirt and you pull it, the first thing likely to go are the buttons, not yeah. the fabric. And that's in simplicity the way it is. What did you see? Well, <laughs> I, you know, it's, it's funny you say that because when, after 91, and when we did the IMAX film, we brought a couple of pieces back, and they were the right. ones that were analyzed. And, and I'm one of the guys that, I guess, mistakenly went on with this brittle plate thing. That's what we thought. But as we get deeper into it, and, and they went back in, I guess, 96 and did the, some more work, it looks like, uh, the, looks like the rivets are the, are the problem. So what but it's interesting, Steve was there ahead yeah. of everybody because he'd seen pictures but like that. But what happened? You mean they were building the ship too quickly, they didn't pay attention, the rivets weren't made out well, of the right stuff? See, that's what you're getting now. There's uh, the uh, Institute of Standards and Technology in Maryland. Timothy Folke, a metallurgist, he's working on this, and I've sent him all the material I have. He feels the rivets had slag in them and as such were an unstable metallurgical substance that didn't cool properly. I've got another theory, and it makes all the sense in the world. If you look at footage of these old liners being built, you have a furnace. The rivets are heated in this furnace, and then they take tongs and they toss them to the men with the hammers. If a rivet stays in the furnace too long, it doesn't turn red hot, it turns white hot and starts to spark. Mm -hmm. Any blacksmith at any pioneer village even will tell you, once metal starts to spark, it's doing what's called oxidizing in the air and it is now four times as brittle as it ordinarily was. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, just stopping for a smoke break while the furnace is going, the gentlemen smoking their pipes working on the ship... Could have rewritten history. Could have rewritten history, or made the ship a little bit more... Joe, what do you think about all of this, I mean, that it what? could have been prevented? Uh, what I'm fascinated with is Steve's detail. I mean, here's a guy <laughs> who loves this story so much that he gets into this kind of yeah. understanding, and, and I'm fascinated someone could, could take that much focus and attention yeah. on this. Thank you. Um, <laughs> but do you yeah. have a theory about, I mean, do you think it could have been prevented? Oh, I, I'm, I'm really not a ship expert. Yeah. I, I'm, a, I'm a people person. I, I'm interested in the people side of it. Yeah. But I, what I do hear are lots of conflicting theories and ideas that are probably going to end up eventually for a, a much better understanding of what actually happened. Steve? Now. Could it have been prevented? Oh, absolutely. Uh, I mean, the oh, collision. Yeah. Oh, the collision. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Oh, sure. um, not in the construction of the not, ship. That's yes. not in okay. construction, um, but, but in the behavior of the men that night on the... Uh, absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, you know, and the new movie has targeted the captain. It's made the captain the villain, and that's historically inaccurate. It was a seamanship traditions of 1912. Not sophisticated enough to keep up with the new, the new toys? Well, yeah, primarily they didn't understand what they were dealing with. Technology got too far ahead of people, and then also you, you do have a certain degree of confidence. Yeah. You know. Let's pick up on that point when we return with uh, Dr. Joe McInnes and Steve Santini.